A new strategy is being launched to try to improve health care for women in England. The government plans include specific training in women's health for medical students, while existing doctors could take extra courses. A focus on issues including fertility and the menopause aimed to address inequalities in the system, known as the gender health gap. But ministers have admitted the plan isn't a quick fix. The strategy was devised after a consultation of 100,000 women found that more than 80% felt they weren't listened to when seeking help from the NHS. Here's Catherine Burns. They say some people open up to their hairdresser more than they do to their close friends. That's definitely true for Zoe Trafford and her clients. Most of the time, I'm the agony I'm, but now they're having to listen to me and my problems. <laughs> Zoe has had endometriosis since she was a teenager. It can cause severe pain and heavy bleeding. For years, though, doctors told us she just had bad periods. You'll be all right. It's just normal. Yeah. And it's not normal. Well, I don't think being in pain is normal. I just used to have periods that would last for months and months on end. And it's just like you, just told her it's unlucky. See, that's just not fair, is it? No. So part of the uterus is coming out, yeah. Coming out? Yeah. Oh, my word, you poor thing. Do you feel like you've been given enough options by the doctors? No, not really. Let's face it, it's like you've either got a vagina or a voice. You don't seem to have both, do you? No. No, you're right. Older teenagers say their main health concern is periods. For women in their 20s, the focus shifts to gynaecological conditions. Next, pregnancy and fertility are highlighted. Because as women age, their needs change. Menopause is the next big question. And for over 60s, the spotlight is on healthy ageing. Women's health has been affected by the pandemic too. Since it started, gynaecology waiting lists in England have gone up by 79%. The average is 49%. Here in Westminster, the government says this strategy will help women across the course of their lives. But there's also an acknowledgement that it's not going to be a quick fix. It's a start of, of, of the process. Um, some things we can, we've got some low hanging fruit we can make some quick wins on. Others, it's about, you know, this isn't just something that's going to be an announcement today and not happen in the future. We're serious about this. So, what will that low hanging fruit be? There's a plan for better access to IVF, more training for medical students, a commitment to encourage more women's health hubs. One thing there isn't is a lot of new money. There's also a question about keeping up the momentum on this. I'm really concerned about the timing uh, and this coming just before recess. It, it was a shame we didn't get it a couple of months ago where you could see time to, to push this through. This isn't the first women's health strategy in the UK. Scotland's plan came out last year. Wales has had a women's health implementation group for four years. Northern Ireland doesn't have a specific strategy. So are you happy about it? Back in Liverpool, what's the verdict in the salon? I think it's good that they're doing something. Uh, yeah. And I think slowly but surely women's voices are getting louder. Louder, so, yeah. Although we might wait, I think, eventually. Maybe it will be better. Maybe it'll be better for our daughters and their daughters, you know. But what about us? <laughs> what about us? I think that's the thing. It's nice that we seem to be getting a voice. Our voices are being heard. It's just going to take time. Yeah, that's how I feel. Fingers crossed, girls. Yeah? <laughs> Catherine Burns, BBC News.